What's going on guys? Welcome back to our Let's Play here on the Amplified Console Edition. Now, last episode we were working on the cosmetics of the wall. I took you through uh, my designing process pretty much. And then we built a little section, but as you can see, um, it took me about a day, day and a half worth of uh, playing time to get the whole wall sort of cracked out. Now you can probably tell I got rid of... Um, the diagonal sections that I was going to have in the wall because if I show you an image on the side of the screen right about now you can see that the way it comes out looking it was just it demolished the entire look of the build completely I could not make the diagonal section of this type of design work so where we were having like a diagonal go from that point there over to I think it was about that point there we got rid of that and we just done a straight section with a corner piece and then uh, obviously for you OCD people out there I tried my best to make it all sort of match up now obviously we have to take the sections up and down here and there depending on how the terrain goes but on this section here where I took out the diagonal I was left with a one wide gap which is how comes we've got this little pillar tower thing here and uh, I wasn't too sure what to do with it. I think that I've managed to make it sort of fit roughly okay. On the other side, on the internal corner, it doesn't look half as bad. But yeah, that annoys me a little bit that it didn't match up. But I'd already built the majority of the wall. Now, if we go around... Come on, get some... Ah, oh, really? I need some flight. Come on. There we go. Now we've got an empty section there, we've also got one just over here, and we've also got one just over here. Um, they are going to be our three gatehouses, and if we just take a quick landing up here without taking damage, there we go. Uh, we've got the walls end there and just over there, because I want a way of going down to the ocean. I'm going to get rid of that little middle island there and that section there and then have like a big dockyard come in around the bend hopefully with like a stairwell with a sort of access for horses and stuff to get up and from and probably build a ship or two over here eventually but regarding the wall it took me uh, a lot longer than I thought it would have done obviously the first few sections you build it's um, just learning the design and then after about five or ten of them you get in the swing of it and then after around about 20 or 30 sections and you get a little bit overconfident you start making silly mistakes the stairs weren't placing correctly in the right orientation and I was misplacing blocks and each time you try to mine the block with it being sandstone you take out about seven of them so uh, yeah in between the days of doing it I had to have a few hours break Hopped on a bit of Battlefield 1, just to break up the day a bit. And uh, eventually managed to get the rest of the wall completely done. But let's get rid of this bunny. I'm trying to breed the bunnies and they keep on spawning everywhere, taking up the mob cap. I've been trying to collect the rabbit's feet. As you can see here, I've got like a little pen full of them. And I've managed to get eight rabbit's feet so far. For the, I think it's the leaping potions or potions of leaping I don't know why I want to make them I've just got an interesting thing of trying to find a horse that can jump really high and then put in a potion of leaping on it as well as a potion of speed 2 and see how fast and high it can jump but that's just me being bored in between episodes now today we're going to be working on the gatehouse and mainly the mechanics of the gatehouse rather than just the cosmetics because we want a functioning gatehouse now, obviously this is going to be our centre point. I need some sort of marking out blocks. Uh, not you. Let's grab... Actually, we've got a bit of sandstone on us. Now, the design I've got in my redstone world is only three wide. I actually want the gate itself to be five wide. And I know the design in my redstone world. The redstone goes off to the side by about eight or nine blocks for the circuitry of it and obviously we're only going to have because this itself is going to be a separate tower that's going to be a separate tower 
we've only got one, two, three blocks either side of the actual gate. So technically it's only going to be two blocks because we're going to want it to be flush with the wall. And we don't want to be seeing any of the redstone mechanics after we've put like the cosmetics over the redstone. But um, what I am going to do is rather than putting you through the ordeal of watching me trying to compact this into such a small area, it's probably going to take me an hour or two to figure out all the redstone mechanics of not only making the gate a lot wider itself, but then also uh, compacting the redstone. I'm going to try my best just to push most of the redstone underneath the ground because we've got unlimited room there. Um, in this area, I should be pretty safe to work as long as I'm inside the confines of the wall. I have completely gone spam happy with torches inside. So there's been no mobs spawning within the actual walls themselves. And obviously through time, we're going to be getting rid of the torches as we build like the houses that are one and the type of contraptions and whatever's going to be going within the confines of the wall but that's for another day and we'll obviously get rid of the torches as we do that but for now we're just going to have to deal with the uh, whole torch spamming effect over the entire place looks all right in night time but uh yeah also in the last episode i said i was going to run these lights going all the way around the wall i've not done that yet because i'm not 100 percent settled on it for up close, like this sort of distance, it looks really nice and to have them going along would look pretty cool. But uh, I was looking at it from, let me get a little bit of flight and I'll just show you the angle that I was looking at it from before we get up to here. And then, yeah, from here, if you add them every single pillar going along, I'm not too sure. And I'm not too sure if I should have them going just along the outside of the perimeter wall or should I have them on the inside as well. But uh, let me know what you think on that in the comments below. And right now I'm going to crack on with the redstone of the gatehouse and I'll probably bring, uh, bring you back once the redstone bits and pieces are in and I'll run you through what I've done. So I guess I'll see you back shortly. And we're back guys. Now it's a... Uh, it didn't actually take too much longer than I actually I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be at it for a good hour, two hours, but it only took about 40, 50 minutes to compact the design I already had in my redstone world. So I put down the torch there. I don't like that lighting glitch. Now, there is obviously a million and one different tutorials on YouTube already on how to build these type of gatehouses, but... The one that I wanted to build were specific to the way that I wanted it. There's uh, two things. There's a lot more compact ones than this as well. It's like all of my redstone I've managed to hide underneath the ground. I've tried my best to make it future proof as to um, when the Better Together update comes out. I've tried to follow the same redstone mechanics that the Pocket Edition currently has. Now there's two things that I wanted mainly with this is that one for it to be completely flush with the walls when it's down and when it's up so you can't see any of the redstone in either situation. So if we press the button, it takes a second and then it all comes down, all locked in nicely, completely flush with the ceiling and the walls. And the other second function that I wanted was that there was a button to both open and close it either side depending it basically it doesn't matter which way you open it or close it so if i opened it on this side or if i closed it on this side then i flew inside i could still open it and close it from this button that is done by a oh i did not mean to do that by a very simple redstone function let me uh just get back up here it's going to be getting night time soon as well now both the buttons are linked to this sticky piston with a redstone block on which sends a signal to this device here. It is very simple to build but it basically changes the button signal into a lever on and off switch. My one I've used it to basically switch between opening and closing the gate. Now most of the tutorials that you see out there for using these uh, type of gatehouses, I forgot the proper name for it. I'm just referring to it as a gatehouse but the actual system where the gate comes down has a proper name. I honestly cannot remember it off the top of my head. 
But uh, this little device here basically turns the input you get from either button. You can have 20 buttons all linked up to the same input. It sends it down to this and then it switch, uh, switches between sides. So one side will open, one side will close. This side over here is then linked into a very old school monostable circuit. Now, obviously in most of my builds you see with the monostable circuits, it's just a sticky piston. Um, actually, let me quickly grab some redstone and I'll show you what I mean. It's a lot easier to explain when I just uh, do it on camera. We need a sticky piston, uh, repeaters, a input device where you should have a piece of stone on us, and some redstone there. Now the old, well the unstable circuits that I would usually use would be, let me get a solid block, a sticky piston like that, and then you'll have the redstone going from there, and then you'll have a signal going back out of here. And then if you send a, have we got any cobblestone on us? It's easy to explain if we've got a lever. Make sure I've got the fortune pick. Grab that. Quickly grab a lever for night time. And then we do this. Then what happens is that when you send a uh, constant signal, it will change it into a one tick pulse on the other end, like that. That is a monostable circuit. Now, that's the one that I use in most of my builds, but the Pocket Edition mechanics does not have, uh, it's called quasi powering, where the repeater here is powering the block diagonal from it, which is good. Well, in this case, this sticky piston. So I've had to use a old school method of what I used to do is that you send two signals going to the sticky piston. And then what that does, if we're able to be able to get to the button from where we are, uh, do that. Oh, what? Um, which way is easiest to show you this? Just quickly fill her up. If there was, oh, there is nothing in front of us or on top. Okay. So what will happen is that a signal will come into these two repeaters, one will kick out, and then you'll get a one signal pulse coming through here. In this case, I've extended it because it's running into a redstone torch tower, which runs up top, and then I've readjusted the repeaters at the top to coincide to counter adjust this. So it does work, and this is literally the sort of old way that I used to do them on the stable circuits, but... Obviously, moving forward, this is how I'm going to be doing it. There's also ones that don't involve pistons at all, but I find the ones that use the pistons a lot more simplistic and easier to fit into builds. Let's just break all of this. And if you're wondering how comes there's dirt, it's because all this area is the area that I was uh, terraforming. All of this was plains biome. But yeah, um, it works exactly the way I want it to work. And I've been testing it a few times. And each time I'm not having any muck ups, especially including the saving bugs. Well, not the saving bugs, the sort of saving lag that you get. So like I said, you can open and close it from both sides. There's a slight pause before the pistons kick off. Now, like I've said many a times, when you're doing redstone builds, make sure that you light up the area. As you can see, I've spanned loads of torches around there just to reduce lag. But there's no clocks or constant redstone going off in this area. It will only be as and when you're opening and closing the gates. And just to show you that I can do it from both sides. Hop back over here. And hop onto this side. And then what I mean is that like, you can open it from one side, go through, and then you can close it from the other. And that is just down to that very, very simple little redstone circuit, which is here. It's just two pistons with redstone block, two blocks above it, a bit of redstone dust, redstone torch either side. And then obviously the output is the redstone block, depending on which side it is. And that turns any um, button into a lever mechanic. Or lever, lever, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And then for this section, it just runs round into another monostable. It runs round the slight delay on the bottom ones. There's no delay. Actually, I think there's a free tick delay on the top ones on this section 
yeah, there's a three tick delay, four tick delay on the bottom. So then they could all go in order and the bottom ones can pull down the second lot. I did have a really weird bug initially before I'd done the timings on the repeaters here. Um, what was happening, and I've never seen it before, that both pistons would extend. And then when they retracted, there was um, the sticky pistons would grab the sand layer from above the normal pistons, pull it down onto it. So then it would switch places. So then you'd have the line of sticky pistons, a line of sand, line of pistons and a line of sand. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why it was doing that. But it was something very silly if I remember that this block, this half slab was over here. So if we go and actually we want the, I'm just taking stuff and putting stuff in my hotbar. Um, you want, I think, yeah, the half slab was here and I had redstone there. So then the redstone was feeding twice into this bottom layer and that was causing that glitch. And it was a really, really weird one. I've never seen pistons be able to do that before, like juggle layers between them. But um, I may try re-inventing uh, that glitch at a later date to try to utilize it for something. But right now I've managed to compact it initially in my redstone world. This redstone, everything underneath was off to the side here. And then there was around about seven or eight stones worth of redstone dust going this way. Uh, before I had the sticky piston pushing the redstone block down underneath ground, it was obviously pushing it out to the right, and then I had the circuit over there which changed the buttons into the lever system, and then I had both monostables on the right hand side, so all the redstone's being pushed directly underneath, and it's made it <coughs> sorry a lot, lot more compact, and it works absolutely fine. So... The only thing I have to go ahead now is design a sort of dress to put over it really. Just make it tie in. I've got to build these two towers either side. I was just wondering if I was going to run short on room. And I managed to fit it in perfectly. So the other tower will be coming up here. And then you'll have the other tower obviously coming up just short of this redstone tower torch. So it'll be around about there. So that will come up to the same level as the walls, and then I need to design something um, moderately larger for the actual gatehouse itself to signify that it is the gatehouse. But I'm not too sure if it actually... No, it's not too low, because the actual building itself will be a lot higher. And where the ground is here, if I, if I brought it up any more, it would have looked out of place. So yeah, I think it's, uh, it's come out not too bad, actually. But what I will go ahead and do, I'll go work on the cosmetics off camera and um, I'll bring you back once it's uh, looking halfway decent. So I guess I'll see you back in a sec. Welcome back guys. Now I've gone ahead and I've got the cosmetics of the actual gatehouse done. If you could just see it in my bottom left hand corner there. Now let's see if we can go fly towards it in a third person mode here. I'm probably going to die here, yep, there we go. Um, sorry about that, I'm just getting a little bit bored flying around. I'll waste so many rockets just doing this, like before I even start recording I end up just flying around for a good 15-20 minutes. Just looking at everything, seeing what can be changed, what can be improved. But what I have gone and done as uh, the uh, words muddled up, getting late now. I've gone and put a dress over all the redstone works. Now, obviously, this pathway coming out here is going to be done a lot more better than just the half slabs. This was just uh, to show you the sort of gradient and how to come in and out. Now, this side has had to be brought out a lot further than the other side because most of the redstones come out this side. Like, you have the repeaters with the redstone wiring coming out on this side. Now, I have done a indent of the cyan just to match up with our walls. I was going to go much bigger than our walls as it's a gatehouse, but then I thought um, just to tie it in with the actual perimeter wall a lot more and considering that I managed to compact the redstone so much, I was able to keep it in a good size proportion to the walls. Now I've done a 3 by 2 gap of the cyan indent there. Now I'm hoping that I can come up with a banner design 
So I've not yet started using banners and I've not played around with that part ever since they've been added. So I'm going to have a play around, see if I come up with a decent banner design for our fort area and our main base build. And then that could go like dead centre there on the cyan. Obviously we we're going to want something either white or I don't know what colour you can get for the banners that will match up to the spruce or sandstone. But either white or cyan backing for the actual banner I'm reckoning. And uh, yeah, all the redstone is still hidden on this side. It's tied in nicely. Just done a nice little arch on this side. And uh, it's, yeah, it's tied in quite well with the perimeter wall that goes round. I never thought I was going to be able to compact it as much as I did. I still need to put in lighting going along the walls. Now, I'm, like I said before, I'm not dead set on the fire lighting going all the way along. Maybe every other one. But I'm definitely going to have to get lighting done soon because what I am happening, nothing can actually spawn within the pr uh, every time from that one point. It's driving me insane. Let me get a flight. There we go. What is happening is that there's um, a lot of blocks that are spawnable up here. Obviously all the spruce is half slabs and we've carried on the pathway going around just up and over the gatehouse. Very nice transition, just a little bit wider than the rest of the walkway. So once the other two gatehouses are done, you're going to be able to walk from one end all the way around to the other, if you so wish to. Now you have got blocks like these, there, there, the one I'm standing on, all of the smooth sandstone are all spawnable places. So we're going to have to, well, we're going to, I'm going to have to finally decide on the type of lighting that I actually want to do. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I do like the fire lighting, but I reckon that much fire lighting on both sides of the wall may be a little bit overkill on it. And I'm not too sure having that much fire rendered at the same time, because it's, um, it's an active animation, like, because it's constantly going. It's like, even if I do my pause menu, it's constantly running in the background. Now my game isn't currently running, but the fire animation still is. So that rendered, and you've got to think about it. There's over a good 100, 150 sections. Not 150. There's about a good 100 sections of the wall, which means there will be a good two to 300 fire lightings just in this one area. Now, I don't know if the fire will contribute towards lag. And the last thing I want to do is going to make the main area that I'm building in and the main area that I want my main storage system in to become laggy as all. Well, just laggy as all, really. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think regarding lighting. Let me know if you've got any other suggestions on way I can hide lighting in or around this type of wall design. Right, even if it's a case where, um, hmm. I was thinking about sea lanterns, like in the middle in, of the cyan concrete, but that will think I'll be a little bit too in your face. Um, maybe redstone lamps at the top, like one layer below the top layer, just so it's still indented and then I could just power them with like redstone torches or levers from the inside. That will light up pretty nicely and the redstone lamp isn't completely in your face. But yeah, let me know what you think regarding the lighting. I'm quite happy with the way the gatehouse itself has come out. Took me a little while to figure out the redstone, but it works the exact way that I want it to work. And I'm quite happy with the end result. And I've made sure that it is all working after I've uh, dressed it all up and it is still working fine. Still all flush to the walls and the ceiling. And uh, yeah, once I've got the other two in, this area is going to be completely safe and sound to build in. Barring the blocks up there, which are obviously still going to be spawnable due to no lighting being up there. Or I guess I could, to, uh, if I didn't want to do lighting, I could always just half slab the blocks that are up there that are spawnable. Which wouldn't actually take more than about two minutes to run along and do. That could avoid me having to put fire everywhere. But I think um, the fire light in every other section of the wall outside might be a good idea. 
because I do like it, but I think it going all the way round. I'm just, I don't know if that causes lag to the game or not. And I really don't want this area to start becoming too laggy for me to be enjoying to be able to play it. But yeah, um, I think that's going to do it for today. Uh, I thought we had a little bit of redstone, a little bit of cosmetics, a little bit of building time. It's a few little jump cuts, but uh, the only thing I could say to take away from this episode is if you're going to build a redstone build, there is going to be thousands upon thousands of tutorials and demonstrations online. I could quite easily do a tutorial on the one I've done. My advice is figure out what it is you want to build and then go into a creative world or test it out in your actual world and play around with the redstone first. Figure out how it is that you want it to work rather than just finding a tutorial for the basic idea and then go, okay, well, I guess I'll just put up with that then. Because I could quite have easily, Mumbo's done one which is ridiculously compact. Like his one's only like too high and too low and it's only like one width. And But his one works by a lever only from one side and uh, unfortunately that was just not the way that I wanted my own to work so my redstone may be a little bit more messier than most of the tutorials out there but it works exactly the way that I want it to work and if anything goes wrong with it I know exactly what should be working and how it should be working with it which is always a good thing when you design your own redstone builds but yeah that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have and it's your first time to the channel, please consider subscribing for future Minecraft content. And I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye bye.